Welcome and uh, happy Sabbath. <clears throat> we want to thank you for joining us on this Sabbath morning for our lesson discussion. We want to thank God because he has given us this opportunity once again to learn from him. Uh, my name is Jared Manyara. I will be moderating today and I want to invite my elder to introduce himself and say hi. I greet you all in Jesus' name. Happy Sabbath. Happy Thank day. you so much. I'm Elder Pere Nyaroya, a servant of the Lord in this church. Thank you so much, and God bless and welcome. As we begin the lesson, let's bow down for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you this morning for your mercies upon us. Thank you for giving us life, and thank you for giving us good health. As we embark on this lesson, Lord, we pray that you be with us. We know there are those who could be unwell and may not be able to join others physically to worship. But as they join us online, we pray that you be with them. We also pray for the online uh, audience. Lord, that you be with them also as they join us. Lord, how we pray that the Holy Spirit may lead us as we begin and until we end for this humble prayer in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, we want to thank God because he has been gracious. We are coming to the end of the quarter today with our last lesson. And this quarter, we have been looking at managing for the master till he comes. And we realize that our master is Jesus Christ who has entrusted resources to us to manage on his behalf until he comes. And we know when he comes, and that is the second coming. Uh, I want to invite Elder Opere probably to take us briefly through this quarter's lesson, even, uh, even as we end uh, this day. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Elder uh, Manyara, and to all our viewers. In this quarter, we looked at very profound mat matters here pertaining to eternity. And <clears throat> pertaining to eternity while we are still down here under the sun. We've looked at managing for the master till he comes. But interestingly, we, uh, one thing which I realized here is that the word of the Lord, the Bible, talks much about money and wealth, our relationship with them, much more than it talks even about uh, faith. Perhaps it is only defeated by the word love. Why is it so? Because our relationship with the material position plays a very big uh, role in our relationship with God. So one thing I realized uh, which this lesson depicted and brought out is that when we understand how re our relationship with God, it will determine our relationship with the material possessions. One, that we are only stewards. We are only caretakers. And our relationship should be much more with the giver than the materials we are managing for the master. In one of the lessons which I remember was lesson one which I remember was very key. First of all, we looked at we are family of God. The first thing to understand is that we are members of the family of God. Members on what category? By creation and now by salvation, by redemption. And when we accept Jesus Christ, we are members of God's family. Then, something which I realized which was very key was that after realizing that we are members of God's family, God has a covenant with us. He, had, he has a covenant. And this is a covenant of salvation. But this covenant, when you have a covenant... It is expressed in action. The covenant, that is, uh, 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 when you have a covenant or you have a, a binding relationship, 
it is expressed in actions and one of the ways in which this covenant is expressed god gave us a covenant which is expressed through our relationship which we exhibit in our relationship with the material possessions which we have the covenant of salvation god gave to us but now how do we relate to, in terms of material possession he gave us a contract of tithing and we realize beloved the only place where god has said we try him is in tithing he said out of 100 percent 10 is his but then 90 is ours but even this 90 which is ours is for our sustenance it is still god's because even you and i elder and my sister Ru rumona <laughs> are still gods and how we use them is dependent on our relationship with him and one thing which stood out for me which amazed me how god is able to run the affairs of uh, salvation with only 10 percent while for us remaining with the 90 <laughs> we still cry <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that one amazed me so much <laughs> one thing another thing which i uh, i loved so much was in deuteronomy 28 that when we are obedient to the contract relationship we have with our Lord Jesus Christ, which is exhibited in tithing and offerings, he promised that his blessings will overtake us. Amen. And then uh, you remember, this was uh, very profound that we have lived too much in the dispensation where the blessings are simply trickling and chasing us are only trickling after us we should live in a dispensation where god has promised where the blessings will be overtaking us and that is possible if we are faithful and if we are faithful to the covenant relationship which god has established with us god desires us to live good life when we are here under the sun and one thing we realized which as we manage for the master which injures the covenant relationship is when we do things contrary to the will of God. This includes debts, unnecessary debts. We realize that debts might be inevitable. The Bible has not said we cannot be in debt, but it discourages. But we realize that there are debts which may be inevitable, like flooding may come, things beyond our need, our measure, like flooding, earthquake sickness things like that but in a case where it is necessary we should avoid it as we avoid corona as we avoid plague and we realize that debt is one thing which we should try to avoid by living the principles of god living within our means being faithful because debt erodes the joy we have in our relationship with god and the Bible has given us profound ways in which we can deal with them. I remember it was said that when you find yourself in a hole, the best way to act is to avoid digging. Yeah. That is, if we have debts, the best way we learned here is that we should strive as much as possible to clear the debts we have. We should not borrow, continue borrowing. We should not borrow from John in order to pay Paul. No, we should stop. Any little we get, we should work hard to try eliminating the debts. And we should work hard to generate more wealth. We should work, look at the biblical principles like farming. Do things which will legal ways and godly ordained ways which will help us to generate wealth, to eliminate the wealth, to eliminate the debt. <clears throat> and when we have learned that, we should learn that we should lay all our treasures where there is no moth or rust. We should learn to trust God as it is in Malachi. We should learn to give God the best. Simply, first of all, by our lives. We should strive to give God the best. That is why the Bible says, remember the Lord in the days of your youth. Meaning the Lord requires to give him the best. Of course, God is gracious, is faithful, and just to forgive. Even if we, tire, we, run, we, 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 we go away from him, 
and we come back and our sunset days is just and ready to forgive. But how sweet would it have been if we gave him our best in terms of strength, mental ability and all that. Beloved, as I summarize, we were told that we should plan as we plan for success. We should try, one, give God what is his. Give, use our tithes and offerings even for the glory of God. Even as we use it, we should not use it for, in a covetous manner in a covetous manner but we should be faithful with what god has given us and lastly what i saw last time is that we give back as we give we use this to give to do the work of god i also learned that we need to learn how to manage in tough times because the times we are living in are tough and we are not expecting them to be any better my elder even though political sloganeerings have been that it is going to be better. It is not going to be better. You have typical examples, seven in our country, where we are told as we put the Bible down, things will change. But they have never changed. The thing is, even those people who hold the reins of power, it won't be better unless we operate with the biblical principles. One, as a people who fear and honor God. Who knows what is sacred to God. And unless we surrender our lives to him. And obey the covenant relationship he has established with us. When we do that. Then our land will be blessed. And as individuals spiritually. Our relationship with Christ will be established. As we work for the salvation of other souls. For the kingdom of God. Amen. Thank you my elder. Thank you, Elder Opera, for walking us through mm -hmm. what we have been covering through this quarter. Mm -hmm. Sister Lumona, welcome. I thank you. And uh, join us as we mm -hmm. now embark on our very last lesson yeah. for this quarter. Mm -hmm. Rewards of faithfulness. Mm -hmm. In the book of Matthew chapter 25, verses 21, <clears throat> his Lord said to him, Well done good and faithful servant you were faithful over a few things i will make you ruler over many things mm. enter into the joy of your lord we are all familiar with this parable of the talents mm. where <coughs> servants were given talents and they were supposed to do something with those talents. When the master came, he rewarded them, each one of them, <coughs> according to how they had fared. The question I'm asking, what statement do we expect from the Lord when he comes? Because if you look at the lesson title, Rewards of Faithfulness, mm -hmm. what statement are we expecting as we await for the what? Okay. For the master. Mm -hmm. Are we likely to be faithful to be given a reward like this servant who was told, well done. I know this statement, well done, is very common with children, teachers. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Especially when children have done well, we simply sing for them, well done, well okay. done. Can the Lord sing for us when he comes the second time? Mm -hmm. Though we can never earn salvation, the Bible uses the hope of our word as a motivation for faithful living as undeserving recipients of God's grace. For in the end, whatever we receive is always only from God's grace. There is nothing that we have done on our own that we merit this reward. But we are getting it because of the grace of God. What God has done and we have accepted. So, uh, as David wrote, <clears throat> the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul the testimony of the Lord is sure, 
making wise the simple, the studies of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. <clears throat> the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yeah, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned in keeping them. There is a word. Obeying God gives us a word at the end of the day because obedience is what is like a door to the reward. In various places, the Bible talks about our rewards, what we are promised through Christ after the second coming. And this terrible data with sin is once and all over and done. So, what are we promised? And what assurance do we have of getting what we have been promised? That is the question that we keep on asking ourselves. What is it that we have been promised? And do we have assurance that we can get that? As we look at the rewards of faithfulness. <clears throat> Sister Ramona, mm -hmm. take us through Sunday. Do we merit these rewards? Okay. So when you... The lesson writer has been so gracious to give us several uh, Bible verses that tell us what is the reward for faithfulness. As you, st you started, you asked, are we, when the master comes, we have been learning how to manage for him. But when he comes, will, will he ask us, he will he tell us, well done, or what will he tell you, you know? So here is where, like, the Bible is showing us that part of the faithfulness. And in Hebrews chapters 11, verse 6, it says that without faith, it is impossible to do what? To please him. For those who come to God must believe that he is God and that he, he, he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. The word there is diligently seek him. You are not going to seek God when you want. And then another time, today I don't feel like I want to seek him, so you stay away. And then expect a reward. You are so unreliable and unreliability is not part of the kingdom of God. It's not part of being a manager in the a manager in the kingdom of God because we have learned that we are actually helping God do what man needs. And then when you go to the book of Revelation chapter 12 verse 12 it says, Behold I am coming quickly and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to, to what his work. Again the question is, will God tell you well done or you are not being faithful so you have no part in my kingdom. So from Monday part what comes clearly to me that there is a reward at the end of it all. There is a reward and this reward will either be you are going to heaven, you have been a faithful servant or you are going to hell and burn there. You know, it's, I usually just find it hard to tell people that you are going to hell because I don't imagine anyone, <laughs> I don't imagine anyone going to hell because I think we all deserve to go to heaven because the work of salvation has been done for us. Everything has been done. We just need to stay there because we are not fighting this war because we usually just fighting. The great controversy, great controversy is usually there. But we are, we are operating from the point of God has already won for us. We are operating from the part of victory. So why won't we just remain faithful? So, um... Another thing that comes out for me in the Monday part is being rewarded. The reward that we are talking about is not that we are working for our salvation. No. Salvation has already been done for us. It is merely through grace that we, we are so undeserving because we are so sinful. Because even Isaiah tells us that our work of righteousness are like filthy rags to the, to, in, um, in the presence of God. So meaning that we cannot do any work to please God. Us coming to church every Sabbath is not us working for our salvation. It is us just being obedient. 
but God has a reward for that obedience, you see. So another thing that comes out for, my, for, for me on the Monday part is that they can never be us trying to be on the fence. You are either on the right or on the wrong. You are either to, going to be told well done or you are not, you are not a faithful servant. So what comes out clearly is that there is a reward for everything that we are doing on this earth. What you sow, you will reap. You are either going to be rewarded for your faithfulness or your unfaithfulness. Yeah. Thank you very much, mm. sister, for bringing out very well that all this we are getting mm. is not because of our efforts. No. Otherwise, if salvation was to be earned, mm -hmm. was there a need for Christ to die? No, no, no. There wasn't mm. need for Christ mm. to die. Mm. Thank you very much. And Albert, is there anything you need to You add? know, mm. when you talk of a reward, mm. in the normal context, you think of something uh, you are receiving in return yeah. or something you have done. Mm. Maybe you found a lost pet mm. for somebody. And then you return to the owner. Mm. The owner rewards you. Mm. Or let's take traveling, travel agents or airlines. Mm. They have rewards. If you are a frequent flyer, yeah. then you are given some rewards. Or if you are a shopper, yeah. like we have in the supermarkets, they ask you if you have a card. Yes, yes. Or even Safaricom, mm. bonga, bonga points. They, you have some. <laughs> <laughs> because of being a faithful, because a loyal customer. A loyal customer. <laughs> You see, <laughs> but here the rewards are in terms of material because of something you have been doing. Mm. But now when the Bible talks of rewards, like my sister is saying, mm. like you people are saying, mm. it is not pegged that because we have been, uh, our salvation, because we have been doing this, but God still tells us when we remain faithful, there is a reward Amen. for us. Amen. We are not working to get that reward. No. That we are saved by the grace of God. Not mm. that now we are working. But Who one thing <laughs> we has, God has told us. Despite mm. the salvation, mm. there is a reward for those who are faithful. And you know, this reward, it is not said it is this and that. Mm. We are told what the eye has never seen. Mm. What the ears have never heard. Right. Or the heart has never mm. imagined. Mm. And then... We are told that when we are in that city, we are going to find beautiful things. Mm. The river of life, mm. the, the tree of life is there. The we are streets told, of gold. The streets of gold. <laughs> yeah. We are told, we are just given a snippet of what it is. But the thing is, God is making, telling us, mm. the truth is, there is going to be a reward. And we are told of a city whose author and architect is God himself. To me, uh, I think this is a very motivating uh, sentence mm. or promise God is giving us. And people like Paul were motivated. Mm. We are motivated just like a reward down here motivates. Mm. Even spiritually, it mm. motivates. It motivates. So, mm. beloved, there is a reward. Mm. For those who are faithful, Amen. not only faithful in what, but faithful in managing Very for the master, master. till he comes. Amen. <laughs> Thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, you have mentioned Paul. Mm. Yes. And this is one of the failures who really suffered. Eh? Yes, a lot. A lot. Mm -hmm. Sister Lumona. Yes. What is the connection between our word and the persecution? Um, so, you know, when we talk about persecution, and Christianity, that is where you, you find it a bit parallel, you know? But what we need to understand that we live in a sinful world. By, through one man, sin entered into the world. So it means that there has to be something that will happen for us to go back to the original plan of God. Because God's original plan did not uh, involve any pain because in Jeremiah 29:11 rightly says that God has best plans for us to give us a hope and a future. Remember, God is saying these words even after we had sinned. So clearly, God's original plan did not entail any suffering. I keep 
reminding myself that verse anytime someone has passed on, anytime someone is sick, anytime things are hard, I keep telling myself that God's original plan did not entail any point of suffering, any form of suffering. But because there is sin, because sin came into the world, now then suffering has to come there. And for Christian, persecution has to come. You know, for the early church went through a lot of persecution, a lot of terrorism. And the person Paul we are talking about was among the people who caused a lot of pain to the people. So the persecution part is just to lead us into the everlasting life. Last week we talked about the book of Revelation chapter 13, where we were talking about the mark of the beast, where we were talking about the dragon just terrorizing the children of God, the church, and the woman and its offspring. You know, we are the offspring of that woman that is being talked about in the book of Revelation. So we are going to suffer persecution as a as the children of God, as Christians. But if again we remain faithful even through the pain, like Paul, you know, there's a verse he keeps saying that, I have fought a good fight. That is in the book of Timothy. I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. So the question is, have you fought the good fight? Have you kept the faith through the tribulations, through the trials, like Job? Have you fought the good fight? That is the relationship I see between persecution and the reward. There is a reward at the end of it all, like we have seen in the, the Monday part. There is a reward. Even through that persecution, if you remain faithful, the, the reward is that God is going to come and tell you, come in, my child. You have done what? Well, yeah. Thank you very much, my sister. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus mm -hmm. said very well mm -hmm. that we rejoice when we are persecuted. Yeah. For great <laughs> is our what? It's our reward. Yeah. Yeah. That's a mercy. Mm. Jesus himself mm. went through the same suffering. Yes. The prophets, mm. the apostles. Mm. Now, if we also go through the same, mm. there is a reward. Yes. He has said mm. it will not be in vain mm. if we are being persecuted for Christ's word. Sake. For Christ's sake. Mm. Uh, thank you very much. And Dopera, take us through Monday, eternal life. Thank you so much. Um, just like my sister has laid the ground for that. Mm. You know, when we are told of everlasting life, mm. we are talking of a reward. Mm. We are talking of incentives. These are intent incentives. Mm. Mm. Even in the normal world, there are monetary and non-monetary rewards. They can include promotions if it yeah. is place of work. Mm. It, can be, it can include... Um, uh, certificate of recognition and mm. appreciation mm. it can include monetary a things badge. a badge <laughs> yes. a voucher yes. all those are mm. rewards mm. like even mine here <laughs> this is a reward a pin of reward i got yeah. when i attended the youth congress in yeah. south africa yes. and this one was the pan africa mm. When I attended the Pan African Youth Congress yes. in Baraton, those are rewards. Mm, earthly rewards. Yes. <laughs> but then now mm. we are told that <clears throat> apart from the salvation, the things which come with it, mm. there is eternal life. Amen. Amen. And this eternal life for those who are faithful. In the book of Hebrews 11 24, it says, By faith, mm. Moses. When he, was, he came of age, mm. he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's mm. daughter, mm. choosing rather to suffer affliction mm. with the people of God yeah. than mm. to enjoy the pleasures of sin mm. for a season. Yes. You see, mm. Moses foresaw the greater reward mm. of what it would entail mm. when we remain faithful mm. in the cause of God. Amen. Amen. That there were two choices. And the pen of inspiration says heaven was waiting to see mm. choices mm. which Moses would make. Mm. Whether to go for temporary uh -huh. uh, gratification. Let me use a, a normal, uh, a, a simple uh, like illustration, political mm. illustration. Mm. You find somebody mm. uh, cooperating mm. with a ruling party mm. for a short time mm. while well, he knows his constituents does not want that. Mm. So he wants, he says, I am going to cooperate for 
uh, to get development. While when you look at it, mm. it is temporary. Mm. Looking while the bene the longer benefit is that if it does that, he will lose the support of his electorate mm. in a long run. Mm. Moses so that he would enjoy the benefits of being in Egypt as a king or a mm. pharaoh designate. Mm. But then, when it comes to eternity, he would be no one. We are given something, a reward, an insight, an incentive, which motivates us to remain faithful. Mm. And this one is eternal life, everlasting mm. life. There are two things here, beloved. Mm. It is either everlasting life or eternal death. Mm. The choice is ours. Mm. It is ours to make. There are only those two cho choices. And Christ has told us in uncertain terms, he has gone to prepare a, a place for, for us. us. You know, uh, my sister Rumona, this thing used to, I used to wonder about this, mm. that he has gone to prepare a place, <laughs> mansions. You know, I used to wonder, these houses, mm. who are the people building them? Because when you are upper, you know, you see uh, contractors coming mm. in Yumbani, these are traditional homes, mm. there is somebody touching the, 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 the roof. Mm -hmm. So I used to wonder, now, is Jesus, the angels, are they the ones you now bring, giving him mm. maybe the golden poles yeah. to make it? But one thing which mm. I can't imagine, mm. I take it, as Jesus has said, mm. is preparing mansions. Mm. My dear, if you are told you are going to sleep in a five-star hotel, <laughs> even if assuming you are attending a congress <laughs> and you have been booked in a five-star hotel or six-star <laughs> rating hotel, yeah. you look forward to being in that place. But okay, here, okay. Mm. these are mansions made by Jesus himself. Mm. For those who remain faithful, mm. eternal life is guaranteed. Amen. And he said, he's the one who is coming to take us. Mm. You know, mm. when Christ said he's coming, I take it. That is, it is the truth. Mm. The mouth of the Lord has said it. Mm. And we are not just going there. Things are made for us. Mm. We know of Mansions are made. I would not want to miss that mansion. Amen. I know I have a mansion. <laughs> Beloved, we have mansions. Imagine. I only imagine if we miss mm -hmm. those mansions, whether some mansions will be free because some people Decided. made choices mm -hmm. which made them to miss mm -hmm. being there. It is opportunity, your opportunity and mine, to make the right choice by being faithful to our Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. accepting the salvation he offered for us on the cross. So that all these things he has promised to us, mm. everlasting life, mm. packaged together with other things like mansions, mm. be ours. Amen. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. I'm just imagining eh? uh -huh. uh, my mansion, your mansion, <laughs> yes. Sister Mona's mansion, mm. and everybody's mansion. Uh -huh. I know we are friends here. Mm. We keep on visiting each other. Mm. I'm imagining if someone decided not to go to heaven, mm. what will people find when they come to your mansion? Mm. Empty. What will mm. be their feeling? Mm. They will sadly miss you mm. in heaven. Mm. I wish all of us Amen. will make Amen. an effort. Mm. Eternal life mm. is not a myth. Mm. Christ says, I'm going to prepare Amen. a place for you mm. and I will come again and so if he's coming again mm. we are very sure amen mm. that that eternal life is what is true is his mm. sister lumona mm -hmm. take us through the new jerusalem wow the new jerusalem so you know when opera is talking about a mansion and <laughs> me i'm thinking about the part where you're supposed to travel and you <laughs> or you're moving to a new house and the, all that all that is involved in parking you know the parking part is the place that i don't like sometimes i even end up parking the last minute i'm traveling two hours <laughs> that's when i'm parking then you get to where you are going and you remember i have forgotten this i have forgotten that you know but in this new jerusalem the good news is that we will not need to park and that makes me so happy i don't know about others but when you read the book of revelation chapter 21 because that is where john talks about there the the new Jerusalem so well so so uh, so intensely if I may use 
the verse 4 is I'll, I'll just talk about the verses that I really loved God shall wipe away all tears that is verse 4 hey beloved it has been hard every day there is someone who is dying our, we have lost our loved ones and there is a hymn that we keep singing during funerals does Jesus do what? care and the hymn writer replies and says that he does what? he cares there is another hymn that we keep singing and say, asking Oh Lord Jesus, how long? You know, in Second Peter, Peter says that God does not slack in his promise. So this new Jerusalem is a sure promise. Another verse that I really loved is verse 3, where God will now dwell with us. You know, we come to church or when we are praying, we ask for the presence of God. When we go to the new Jerusalem, we will not have to ask for the presence of God. The presence of God will be there with us. And if that is not making you excited about the new Jerusalem, I don't know what will make you excited. Another verse is, God will make all things new. Verse 4, everything will be made new. You know, the pains that you have gone, sometimes you have been involved in a road accident and so now you have to walk with a clutch for the rest of your life. Cancer has attacked you, they have amputated your hand so you have to live with the rest of your life with only one hand uh, you know things keep happening you've been involved in a road accident so you have lost your memory we have to remind you everything but when we go to heaven when we get to the new Jerusalem God will make everything new new for us the way it is supposed to be another verse is that um, the lamb the Almighty God and the Lamb shall be in His... There will be no need for a temple in heaven, you know, because the Lord Almighty and the Lamb will be the temple there. That is what is happening in the New Jerusalem. There will be no need for light because God will be the light for us in Jerusalem. Like Opera says, there will be the streets of gold. <laughs> Everything will be made new. We are looking forward to the New Jerusalem. Yeni, we cannot comprehend, we cannot imagine, eyes have not seen, we, ha we cannot imagine, we, we just, for now we are seeing it dimly, we are trying to use our small imaginations, but clearly we cannot comprehend what awaits us. The question is, will you remain faithful for this reward? Yeah. Thank you very much. <clears throat> In fact, the most amazing thing... Mm. <laughs> on this new Jerusalem mm. is that we shall see the face of God. Amen. Whoa, Amen. Wow, Amen. wow, 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 yes. wow. Mm. It is so amazing. Mm. And now, Perry, <laughs> please tell us about settling of the accounts as we prepare for the new Jerusalem. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, my elder. You know, this one uh, touches on a someone I preached last Sabbath. <laughs> and it's <laughs> really inspires me mm. and you know the, the, even the story of the new jerusalem that we will see him like romana is saying the bible says mm. there will be no need for the sun no. amen you spoken kiswahili <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, you know mm. that one amazes me mm. that there will be no need for the sun. Mm. Christ is the light. Amen. Amen. Even the moon will not be there. The Bible says, and as you see, the greatest blessing mm. is seeing God face to face. Yes. Something which man cannot do now. Mm. Because even in this state, we cannot see God. Anyone because of sin, yeah. anyone who has been in the presence of God, mm. live there as if they are dead. Daniel Isaiah in the year in which King Uzziah died, Moses, mm -hmm. but now we will have the privilege to see him mm -hmm. face to, to face, face with Amen. Christ, Amen. our Savior. Amen. That to me is a very big incentive. Mm -hmm. And then imagine how we are told. Mm -hmm. The book of Psalms and Isaiah says there will be a river. Mm -hmm. A river of blessing, a river of life. Mm -hmm. Running through the sea. And then, let me just look at it. It is, I think it is, a, is it Isaiah 46, if not, I'm wrong, if I'm not wrong, or Psalms, think so. It says there is a river which flows through the city of God. And this river 
beside the river, as the Bible says, there are uh, in the there are the fruit, the tree of life, which gives the fruit, and the leaves heals the nations. Yeah. Me along to, 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 to be in that city, and then we are told the undulating, the undulating hills, mm. which will be the home of the redeemed. My dear, to me this is blessed assurance. Mm. Now, settling of the accounts, mm. we have heard we are told that we are talking of rewards for the faithful. Faithful on what? Mm. Faithful on the things managing for our master. Mm. In the book of Matthew chapter 25, from verse 13, it gives us the parable of the talents. Mm. Coupled with that is Luke chapter 19 mm. from verse 9, 17. Mm. It also talks the talents. Mm. In Matthew, it has given differently. Mm. One five, one two, another one one. Mm. And they continued trading with them and multiplying. The one who had one did not multiply. He was counted unfaithful servant. Actually, that one gives us the text, one of the texts where we are, we are looking at. Mm. A faithful servant, mm. where we, we get, we derive our text today. Matthew 25, verse 21. Mm. In Luke chapter 19, they were all given 10. Yeah. It is, they start from equality. Mm. They were all given 10. 10. And one multiplied and was told, you will be in charge of 10 cities. Another one got five more. Mm. He, will be he was told, you will be in charge of five cities. Mm. And then another one decided to put it in a napkin. Yeah. You know, mm. the Bible uses a very terrible language. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Uses a, a, te a, a terrible language, sorry. Thank you. A terrible language mm. that he decided to keep it in a napkin. As the version says, in a handkerchief. Look at even the the way this guy was unfaithful, even the, yeah, the very way, careless, very <laughs> careless way of dealing with it. Mm. That is in Luke chapter 19. Mm. Mm. That he decided to put it in a, in a handkerchief or a napkin. My elder, you can imagine uh, somebody keeping something in a napkin. What does that connote? Mm. Carelessness. Mm. But then, the point we find here, beloved, when you read. Uh, chapter 19, verse 20. Mm. Then another came saying, Master, here is your mina, which I have kept, put away, uh, I have kept, put away in an handkerchief. Carelessness. Beloved, for us to be counted as faithful servants, we have to be faithful in how we manage for the Master before he, he comes. comes. For us to get this uh, terminology, for us to be referred to us, look here as the Bible says, as it is, these other ones who are faithful, the first, the, then came the first, that is Luke 1916, mm. then came the first saying, Master, you are mina has earned ten minas. And he said to him, Well done, good servant, because you are faithful in a, a very little, have authority over 10 cities. One thing I have, dis have found here, mm. when we are faithful to the Lord, mm. it is to our advantage. Amen. <laughs> it is to our advantage. Yes, for the sure. Reward, <laughs> or the reward, whatever is earned, mm. is ours. Mm. It is not for the benefit of God. It no, is for no. our own benefit. benefit. Mm. When we become unfaithful, mm. it is to our own disadvantage. Mm. So, my dear brothers and sisters, mm. we have seen throughout this quarter, as members of God's family, who have been called in a covenant relationship, we have a, a, relation, a, relation, a covenant relationship of salvation, and we have been told that now that we have been called, there is a way in which we have to live mm. with the things entrusted to our hands. Mm. The talents and gifts which God has given us, there is a way in which we have to relate with them. Mm. We have to relate in a faithful manner. Mm. When we do that, apart from the salvation and eternal life, we are promised a lot of rewards. Mm. 
including eternal uh, we have the new jerusalem as a city where we are going to live with our savior Amen. face to face mm -hmm. we are told when we remain faithful there's things which we call simple mm -hmm. when we remain faithful the advantage is beyond the imagination mm -hmm. of our heart mm -hmm. we are called for us to be get this statement good and faithful servant enter into the joy of your lord Amen. let us be faithful in the things the lord has entrusted in our hands Amen. Amen. thank you very much elder for bringing it out very well and i know many times we think of uh, talents as the natural gift mm. the this the preaching mm. the singing and the like mm. but ellen white puts it very clearly that the parable also applies to temporal means which God has entrusted in our hands. Yes. And I thank El Dopero for bringing that out mm. very well. Mm. And um, in two minutes, mm. my sister, tell us how we can keep our eyes on the prize. I'll summarize that with Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. My God shall supply all our needs according to his riches in what? In glory. That is a comfort that we should always lean on every other day of our lives. So that we do not spend our time worrying of tomorrow, what tomorrow shall bring. So that we can only worry about our salvation. Am I in the right box with God? Am I using my talent rightly? Am I using my temporal gifts that the blessing that the Lord has given me? Am I using them in the right way? Putting our eyes on the prize in that we know that in everything that we are doing, it is to our advantage. If we are remaining faithful, it is because we want to do it out of love, out of the love of God. We are just showing God the love that he has given us. We are reciprocating. You know, it is very hard to reciprocate God's love anyway because God gave his son. I don't know if we can give our children, but we are looking at the price that this is it. New Jerusalem is on my head. What am I supposed to do to remain faithful? When we are running on the track, we look at a, we look at the prize. We look at the band that we are going to cross. We are not looking behind. We are not looking at the people jeering or cheering us. We are looking at the prize that is ahead of us. As we are looking at the prize that is ahead of us, we should have it at the back of our mind that the Lord will supply everything that we need. If it is grace, God will supply. If if it is strength, God will supply. If it is peace, he will supply. If it is wisdom, the Lord shall supply. And we only have to do what to ask, as we have been told in the book of Matthew 7.7. 7. Ask and it shall be given. Thank you very much, my sister. <clears throat> it is amazing. Mm. Let's keep our eyes on, on the, the prize. prize. Philippians chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. The Bible says, I press towards the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded, and if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. It is not very easy mm. to manage for Christ. Mm. We began this quarter <clears throat> by understanding that we are part and parcel of God's family. Amen. And we know that mm. God created us mm. and we were part and parcel of his family. Mm. The devil took us away. Mm. When he took us away, God came and purchased us. Mm. And when he purchased us, mm. still the resources that he has, the wealth, he, he made us to be partners with him. Mm. Amazing. Mm. And as El Dober put it, God gave us the bigger part, mm. 90%. Mm. He remained with 10%, 10 to manage his affairs. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Mm. 
we need to keep our eyes on the prize. As Paul said, he had fought a good fight. Let's also fight a good fight. Because they said word that we have, if we remain faithful as we have learned through this quarter Amen. and today's lesson. Amen. And now, in uh, less than a minute, <laughs> what is the take home for this quarter? I start with uh, Sister Lumona. Um, you know, Paul says, for I, I am now ready to be offered at the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me that day. And not only me, but to, and to all them also that love his appearing. That is first, Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 6 to 8. This is a verse that we, we like putting in our funeral programs. I have fought the good fight. I have kept the faith. Let us not put this, let us not wait for us to die so that we can say this. Let us wait for the coming of the Lord and say that, so that the Lord can tell us, well done, come into my kingdom, my child. My prayer or my take out has been, we have to be faithful in the managing of the resources the master has given us. And if we remain faithful, he will also remain, full to, remain faithful unto us. Thank you. Thank you very much, my sister. Mm -hmm. And uh, better, thank you. I um, want us to give, uh, you to give us your final remark mm -hmm. in less than a minute. Thank you. And uh, conclude for us with a word of prayer. Thank you. Psalm 46, the one I was referring to, verse 4, says, There is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. Amen. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. Mm -hmm. The nations rage, the kingdoms were moved, he uttered his voice, the heart melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. Amen. The God of Jacob mm. is our refuge. Mm. Come, behold the works of the Lord, who has made desolation in the earth. Mm. Beloved, there is a city which is prepared for you and I. Amen. And then we know, we've learned, and have seen two-thirds of Jesus' parables addressed our relationship with money and material possessions mm -hmm. and our attitudes towards them. In the Bible, mm -hmm. there are well over 2,000 references that deal with this topic. Twice as many as the reference to faith and prayer combined. Mm -hmm. Obviously, God wants us to have a proper relationship with money and to manage it in a way that advances his kingdom. Mm -hmm. If we have to be partakers in that city. And the Bible says that he has placed us in charge of all these resources here on earth. Both our talents and many material positions. Managing for the master is a call of faithfulness. Amen. And after a long time, after a long time, the Bible says... The master of those servants mm. returned and settled accounts with them. Mm. Beloved, when he returns and settles accounts with us, will we be found as faithful or wicked servants? It is my prayer that we be found as faith, good, faithful servants to enter into the joy of our Lord. Amen. And may God bless Amen. us. As we transit into the next quarter, looking at the cosmic mm. <laughs> manenos, cosmic <laughs> matters, yeah. may we transit as faithful servants managing for the master mm. telecoms. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, Savior, for honoring us to be co-workers with you, as to manage for you till you come. How we pray that, Lord, many times we have been unfaithful. But you've given us opportunity that we can mend our relationship with you. As we live 
in accordance to the covenant relationship you have established with us as members of God's family. We pray that we may be faithful in how we manage the resources you put in our hands. We may be faithful as tithe, those who are faithful in returning the tithe and faithful in giving the offerings. And Lord, even before we do that, we pray that we may surrender our lives to you, King of Kings. Strengthen us in areas we are weak. We pray that, Lord, you may sanctify us by your blood. Sanctify our tongues, our feet, our thoughts, and our imaginations, that all the things we do may give you glory. We pray for the viewers and the listeners and us individually and corporately, that at the end of it all, after we have done all this, we may not be found wanting, but we may be counted faithful servants. We thank you and adore you as we transit into the second quarter. We pray that your presence continue to be with us. We give you glory and honor now and always for you asking Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.